Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so let's start. I believe we have already discussed the concept of midpoint theorem, but that time I have just explained, just in general, I have explained the concept. I have not taken a lot of questions from that portion. So today I'm going to take a lot of questions so that you can give your test because that uh, test is already activated in your account. Once I will take your class, then you, you have to go and you have to attend that test. For that, your concept and everything must be very clear. Then only you will be able to perform in a better way. So let's finish uh, midpoint theorem today. So try to understand that when we are having uh, just mid point theorem. At first, we need to understand what the theorem says. Then only we will be able to attempt the questions. Okay. Here the theorem says, whenever we are having a triangle, let's say triangle ABC, If you will take midpoint of any two side, like suppose you are taking the midpoint from this triangle, suppose you are taking the midpoint from side AB, the midpoint you are taking, and from side AC, if you are taking the midpoint, and if you will join them, this line that is suppose this one is EF then this EF must be parallel to BC and the length of EF will be half of the length of BC it's not only true about this EF only you can take any two midpoint like any two sides midpoint. So suppose you don't want to take this two sides midpoint. You want to take midpoint of this side AB, that is E, and you want to take midpoint of this side BC, that is D. And if E, that DE must be parallel to the third side in which you have not taken the midpoint. So DE must be parallel to AC and the length of DE will be equals to half of the length of AC. So if AC is 10 centimeter directly, I can say DE will be 5 centimeter. This is true for any two midpoint. Triangle is having three side. You will take midpoint of any two side. You can take midpoint of this one and this one and can join. It will be parallel to the third side and half of the length of the third side. If you will take midpoint of other two, other two side, then it will be parallel to the first side and the length will be half of the length of the first side. Is it clear what exactly is midpoint theorem? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, converse of the midpoint theorem. The same theorem is explained in different way. So, converse of midpoint theorem. This theorem says if you are having a triangle and if you are taking midpoint of one of the side, just a second. Yeah. So if you are taking midpoint of one of the side and drawing a line through the midpoint, if you are taking midpoint of any one side and you are drawing a line, a straight line passing through the midpoint, if you will draw like this, and if that line 
DE is parallel to BC, then E must be the midpoint of the third side. So what exactly the theorem says? Previously, two midpoint was needed and when you will draw the line, it will be parallel to the third side and length, length is half of the length of the third side. But now, if you are taking one side's midpoint and if you will draw a line parallel to another side, that line must be meet on the midpoint of third side. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. So here we don't know whether E is the midpoint or not. We just know that D is the midpoint and we also know that D is parallel to BC. So if you know D is the midpoint and D is parallel to BC, then you can say, okay, then by converse of the midpoint theorem, E must be the midpoint. Okay. Similarly, if we are having a triangle and here I'm taking midpoint, let's say D. Okay, and I'm drawing a line parallel to one of the side. So I can draw a line like this, parallel to one of the side. Or I can also draw a line like this, parallel to one of the side. Now, wherever this line is going and meeting with the triangle, let's say this is F, this F will be the midpoint. So here we know two conditions that one midpoint is given, one parallel line condition is given. By that, we are getting one more midpoint. That is the converse of the midpoint theorem. Now you understood what is midpoint theorem, what is converse, both are exactly the same thing. But in the first case, we need two midpoint, we will join them, we will get the parallel one. Here we need parallel and one midpoint, and then we will get another midpoint. So, both are exactly the same thing, but in a different way. So the question, the first question from this exercise is, now we need to use the midpoint theorem to prove the like theorems, the given theorems. So, so the first theorem says, there is a, let me draw the picture at first. R S P Q C D A B here, the theorem says ABCD is a quadrilateral in which PQRS are midpoint. Just a second. Okay, so here the theorem says that ABCD is a quadrilateral and PQRS are midpoint of the side AB, BC, CD, and DA. AC is the diagonal. As you can see, AC is the diagonal in this figure. Show that SR is parallel to AC. And also show that SR is equals to half of AC. This is the first thing we need to prove. Parts are there. That says also so that PQ is equals to SR. And the third one. PQRS is a parallelogram. So 
so if we will look at the question carefully if you if we will focus on the triangle because just now we have learned the concept of midpoint theorem so definitely we need a triangle so that we can think about midpoint theorem right right so if this one if we will take this triangle can you see it here we can see p is the midpoint which is already given in the question in triangle ab in triangle abc p is the midpoint already given in the question q is the midpoint already given in the question once we will join two midpoint pq must be parallel to ac do you agree with that yes ma'am and pq the length of pq will be half of the length of ac that's what i was explaining in the first theorem the midpoint theorem so pq is equals to half of ac so this is what we got from triangle abc now if we will focus on the other triangle that is triangle adc in triangle adc again we can see s is the midpoint r is the midpoint and once we will join sr it will be parallel to ac and sr is equals to half of ac right yes ma'am just a minute yeah so sr is equals to half of ac that sr is parallel to ac and sr is half of the length of the ac here in bracket we need to write by midpoint theorem okay can you hear me yes ma'am okay so we are done with part 1 now part 2 see equation number 1 and equation number 2 pq is half of ac sr is half of ac so can we say pq and sr both are same from 1 and 2 yes ma'am so, so pq equals to sr and hence we are done with part 2 okay now we have to show that pq sr is a parallelogram so pq is equals to sr and from here we also know from equation 1 and 2 pq is parallel to ac sr is parallel to ac so all three are parallel with each other pq is parallel to sr and p like from here we can write pq is parallel to ac and ac is parallel to sr so we got one more condition that pq and sr both are parallel with each other how to prove parallelogram what's the property of parallelogram if we are having a quadrilateral where opposite side are parallel and equal we can say it's a parallelogram right yes ma'am hence pqrs is a parallelogram we have proved that pq is parallel to sr pq is equals to sr if you are proving one of the side is parallel and equal then it's a parallelogram only you don't have to prove both the side in parallelogram both the sides must be parallel and equal but if you are able to prove that one of the side is parallel and equal that means that quadrilateral will automatically be, be a parallelogram only okay so we are done with this one is it clear ifra
Yes, ma'am. Now uh, the, another question. In this chapter, in each and every question, we will be thinking about midpoint theorem only. And for midpoint theorem, we will try to search the quadri uh, the triangles so that we can think about it. So let's see the next question. A, B, C, D is a rhombus. A, A, B, C, D. It's a rhombus. What's the property of rhombus? Can you tell me? Ma'am, diagonals uh, bisect each other. That's it. Uh, Ma'am, and opposite sides are parallel. Yeah, and equal also. Rhombus yes. is also having all sides same. A, B is same as B, C. B, C is same as C, D. C, D is same as A, D. All sides of a rhombus are of same length. That's the property of rhombus. Okay. So here we are having a rhombus A, B, C, D. P, Q, R, S are the midpoint of A, B, A, B. B, C, C, D, E, the midpoint of this side. I remember. How are you? How are you? We have to show that quadrilateral PQRS is a rectangle. Now you must know rhombus is having all side of same length here since it's a rhombus A, B, B, C, C, D. D, D, A, O, okay. Now, apart from that, let me write the property of rhombus. Let me open it. Yeah. So A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, all are of same length. Apart from that, the property of rhombus is the diagonal of a rhombus bisect at 90 degree. This is 90, this is 90, this is 90, and this is 90. All right? Now, if we will focus on, we have to show that this is a rectangle. PQRS is a rectangle. So at first, can we say that in triangle, just like the previous one, okay? In triangle BCD, in triangle BCD, we are joining to midpoint. And once we will join to midpoint, that will be parallel to the third side and length is half of the length of the third side, right? So we can say RQ is parallel to BD and RQ is equals to half of BD. Is it clear to both of you? Yes. Okay, okay, so let's see the other triangle that is triangle B, P, uh, not P, the triangle
Just a second. Yeah. In triangle B D A or A B D, again we can say P S must be parallel to B D, and P S is equals to half of of the length of the B D, right? So from here, just like the previous question, if we will focus on equation one. an equation 2 we can say that rq is parallel to ps and rq is equals to ps by equation 1 and 2 right yes ma'am not bd it will be rq is equals to ps once we will take from equation 1 and 2 rq is parallel to ps and rq is equals to ps similarly we will be able to prove that pq is parallel to sr and pq is equals to s r let's write it similarly we can prove that pq is parallel to sr and pq is equals to sr like what exactly is mean point theorem yes rumaisha yes ma'am yes or no yes ma'am no or yes like i can't hear can you uh, can you please uh, repeat it again because i can't hear you can also reply in the chat box whether it's clear to you or not if it's not clear to you then i i'll explain it again what is mid point theorem it is clear ma'am it is clear okay okay let's continue PQ is equals to SR. Now we can say that since opposite sides are parallel and equals to each other, it's a parallelogram. PQRS is a parallelogram, but what we have to prove that PQRS is a rectangle. Okay, so we don't have to prove parallelogram. We have to prove rectangle, but we must know that rectangle is from parallelogram family only. Okay, it's just like the Uh, a part of parallelogram rectangle is a part of the parallelogram it is a parallelogram it will contain all the property of parallelogram apart from that rectangle is also having its own particular properties so if we have proved that it's a parallelogram well and good we are on the right track okay we have to prove now it's a rectangle so here let's write it pqrs is a parallelogram why because opposite side are parallel and equal that's why hologram now if we will focus on this one let's see if we will focus on any one of the quadrilateral over here let me mark it if we will focus on suppose this quadrilateral this is also a parallelogram why because already we have proved that sr is parallel to ac okay so we can say just a minute yeah here if the name is n m o so if sr is parallel to ac 
de in the part of sr that is om if you are taking two parallel line like both are parallel and if you will cut it the first parallel line you are cutting it short the second one also you are cutting it short still the remaining part will be parallel with each other okay that's why if sr is parallel to ac therefore the part of sr the tiny tiny part of sr nr will be parallel can you both hear me am i audible yes ma'am yes ma'am am i audible okay. okay let's continue ma'am your voice is breaking a bit my voice is not clear yes ma'am okay let me check is it clear now okay ma'am okay so i was saying that qr is parallel to bd that we know from midpoint theorem so we can say q the smaller part of on hence the red one is a parallelogram because i have shown that the opposite side of the red one are parallel with each other okay so red one the smaller quadrilateral it's a parallelogram okay from this this one and this one because we have shown that opposite sides are parallel with each other hence it's a parallelogram the smaller one that is m o n r okay now since m o n r it's a parallelogram what is the property of parallelogram that opposite angle of a parallelogram are of same measurement so if this is 90 degree the opposite one will be 90 degree can i say since it's a parallelogram yes ma'am we can yeah it will be 90 degree now what we have to prove that pqrs is a rectangle how we will prove pqrs is a rectangle any quadrilateral is a rectangle if it's one of the interior angle is 90 degree and see pq
Okay. So we just had to show that PQRS is the rectangle. For, for, and what is the property of rectangle? That rectangle is having one of the interior angle as 90 degree. We have shown that it's the smaller quadrilateral we have taken. And there we have shown that it's one of the interior angle that is R is of 90 degree. That is showing that the whole PQRS, one of the interior angle is 90 degree. And hence PQRS is a rectangle. Is it clear to both of you? Yes, Rumaisha, uh, after this class, again, there will be assessment. Uh, I was discussing with IFRA that the assessment will be based on the midpoint theorem, which we are uh, discussing today. So just after the class, already the assessment is activated in your account. Okay, just after the class, go and attempt it. And there you will be able to see whether like you are able to attempt all the question perfectly or not. Very simple question will be there. No worries. A long, long theorem. You don't have to prove it over there. But yes, you have to identify the concepts. If you understand the concept very well, then only you will be able to identify. So anywhere, if you are struggling, you are facing problem or whatever I am explaining, if that is not clear to you, please tell me. I will explain it again. Okay, that's why I was telling you, since it is completely based on midpoint theorem. So the theorem, the very first thing, the basic plot must be clear to you. What exactly is midpoint theorem? And then on the basis of that, we are solving the questions. We are proving the th other theorems. So let's do one more question. Suppose here we are having a trapezium. Okay, here a line is passing through it like this. The name is DC, AB. F, E, that's it. And it says ABCD is a trapezium in which AB is parallel to CD. Already given that AB is parallel to CD. And BD is the diagonal. As you can see, BD is the diagonal over here. And E is the midpoint of AD. As we can see, E is the midpoint of AD. All right, a line go. A line is drawn through E parallel to AB intersecting BC at F. Show that F is the midpoint. Show that F is the midpoint. of BC. All right. Here, if, <coughs> to apply the midpoint theorem, at first, if we will focus on this triangle, suppose this is O, we already know that E is the midpoint. And we also know that EF is parallel to let me check whether it's given or not that EF is parallel. Yeah, it, it is given that EF is parallel to AB. Now only I was telling you, even if you will cut the parallel line, still the remaining part of the parallel line will be parallel with each other. So if we are cutting EF and taking EO, then EO must be parallel to AB. Okay. Now E is the midpoint. A line passing through E touching the another point of the 
ट्राइंगल ए बी डी एंड ईओ इज पैरल टू ए बी देन कैन वी सी ओ मस्ट बी द मीट पॉइंट ऑफ ट्राइंगल ए बी डी बाय कन्वर्स ऑफ मीट पॉइंट थ्यूरम what was the converse of meet point theorem if you if you will take a triangle the triangle is abd and if you will take meet point of one side of triangle so we have taken meet point of ad it is already given in the question that e is the meet point so if we have taken e as a meet point which is already given and eo is parallel to ab then o must be the meet point of the other side of the triangle that is bd right can i write it o must be the midpoint yes ma'am o must be the midpoint of bd now if we will focus on the other triangle that is the purple triangle if we will focus on the purple triangle again we can say that o is the meet point of bd we got from case 1 now a line passing through o that is of is parallel to cd how come it parallel to cd because ab bc c like ab ef cd all are parallel with each other okay so part of ef will be parallel this fo will be parallel to cd because ab is parallel to cd is parallel to ef all three are just parallel with each other so we can say part of ef that is fo will be parallel to cd okay now since fo is parallel to cd in the purple triangle and o is the meet point can we say f will also be the meet point of bc by converse of meet point theorem yeah can we say since o is the meet point and a line passing through o that is fo is parallel to cd can we say f must be the meet point of bc yes can ma'am we say yeah we can say that f must be the meet point of the other side of a purple triangle that is bc and see what we have to prove the green one f is the meet point of bc we are done two times we have used converse of meet point theorem one for the red triangle another for the purple triangle and then we are able to prove that f is the meet point of bc so first we have what we did overall first we have proved that o is the midpoint of the red triangle then by taking o we have jumped to purple triangle now since o is the midpoint of this purple triangle like one of the side and a line passing through o is parallel to one of the side then it must be touching the midpoint of the another side of the triangle got it yes ma'am to the next one suppose we are having a figure like this here we have to show that line segment af and ec trisect the diagonal bd we have to show that this length this length and this length are same the bd 
is getting trisected. That means three part we are cutting to BD and that two in equal three part. Can you see BD? We are cutting BD in three equal part that we have to prove over here. And the condition is given that ABCD is a parallelogram. E and F are the midpoint. E is the midpoint, F is the midpoint of side ABCD respectively. And then we have to prove that the line, the diagonal BD is getting trisected. Trisected means getting cutted in three equal part. Let's do it. So at first we can prove that it's a parallelogram, this one. This one is a parallelogram. We can prove it. How we will prove that? Because AB is parallel to CD. So a, the part of AB that is AE, the tiniest part of AB that is AE must be parallel to FC. Similarly, we can, can say AB is equals to CD. That means half of AB must be equals to half of CD. You are having $100. I am having $100. We both are same money wise. So half of yours, half of mine. So half of AB is equals to half of CD. Now half of AB means we can write it AE because E is the meet point. So AB is getting cutted in two equal halves. You can take this half or this half. Any one you can take. AE is equals to FC we can write. Now this rectangular box and this rectangular box is showing us that these are parallelogram. The red one is a par parallelogram. Okay. Now, once we have shown that it's a parallelogram, now we will focus on this triangle, this blue triangle. What I'm going to say, F is the midpoint. We already know. P F is parallel to OC. Now I will not that part of a parallel line will be parallel to each other. So OC, P F, these are the part of red parallelogram. Can you see the red parallelogram? So it must be parallel with each other. So PF is parallel to OC. F is the midpoint. Hence P will also be the midpoint, right? By midpoint yes. theorem, like in terms of midpoint theorem. So in this triangle, if this is X or if this is Y, this has to be Y because P is the midpoint of the side DO. Okay. Now we will take the other triangle. I'm going to take the this triangle, this one, this one, and this one, the orange triangle. Again, we know E is the midpoint of this orange triangle's side AB. Side AB is E, e is the midpoint, and EO is parallel to AP. One midpoint one parallel that is enough for converse of the midpoint theorem now another point o must be the midpoint of pb okay and since o will be the midpoint of pb by converse of the midpoint theorem we can say if this is y this has to be y only because both has to be equal both the orange side will be of equal length this orange side this orange side and this orange side will be equal. So if that is why, this is why. Now I can say side, the diagonal BD is getting trisected because we got that as a Y, this as a Y, this as a Y. So definitely it is getting trisected, getting cutted in three equal parts, right? Is it clear? Yes. Let me summarize it, what we did. First we have proof parallelogram that AECF is a parallelogram. 
it was very simple to prove it as a parallelogram because already we were having a bigger parallelogram ABCD. So with the help of AB parallel to CD, AB is equals to CD, we can easily prove AECF is a parallelogram. Now we have taken that triangle and there we have proved that P is the midpoint of DO. Okay, that means this part, this part will be same. Now we have taken the orange triangle and we have shown that O is the midpoint of PB. So this part and this part same. So we have shown this, this same. We have shown this, this same. So both are same with the middle one. That means all three are same with it. So all are Y. And what is getting trisected? We can we have already proved that it is getting trisected. Got it? Yes, sir. Both of you, this is how we will use midpoint theorem. Now I will send your homework to you. Uh, just let me give it now only. Let me write it over here only. Exercise eight point two. Number three, number six, now. Oh, oh, we are done. Do, uh, do you want to ask anything from here? Ifra and Rumaisha, do you want to ask anything? No, ma'am. Okay, so we are done with this one. Okay, now go and give the assessment and see whether it is crystal clear to you or not. Okay? Okay, okay ma'am. Okay, then I am keeping it this much. And we will be containing the next topic in the next class. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Best of luck for your assessment. Thank you to both of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ifra. Thank you, Rumaisha.